I don't know, chat. I think I'm cooked after this one. I think... <laughs> I think that the flowers community is probably going to throw me out. After this banger. How you doing, everybody? And welcome right on back to flowers in the winter. The last time we were together, we, 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 we dug even deeper into the mystery that is Shion Basquiat. We uncovered what we think happened there. Um, I still don't think we've told the Sasaki sisters about it, despite having, you know, a day or two to do so. Um, and then we told some fun ghost stories. And then, and then, and then Suo got the lead role in Cinderella or Ashen Poodle. Um, so there's still a lot on everybody's plate and we're going to just dive in and see what we can do about <laughs> alleviating like any of that. So rehearsals for the play progresses smoothly as the transition to midwinter. Ashen Poodle has been performed at the Academy before, which means we're lucky enough to be able to make use of our predecessor's hard work. With the performance fast approaching, we were worried we wouldn't have time to make all the necessary preparations. However, thanks to the handbook's stage plans and costume patterns that have been left behind, we're able to get things ready in the time it takes for the falling snows to cover the ground and turn everything white. Of course, we don't use everything they left us verbatim, but build our own versions of the play from the materials. Still, in what is seemingly becoming the norm, our task of writing the script is left to me, regardless of how much I wish someone else would take charge of it. I don't know, you seem good enough at it at this point that everybody just wants to, or you did it that one time, and it was good enough for everybody to just leave that to you any time it comes around. There are certainly things that I end up doing once and suddenly become the de facto person to do it. Namely, like, what well, used to be like family members and computer stuff, but I don't associate with 98% of my family anymore. So, that, but, but that was the thing that I got saddled with through most of my teen years was come do the computer stuff. Because you did it once and you're the de facto person to always do it. I have to stay up at night after... I have to stay up night after night wrestling with the new script, leaving no time for looking through the books from Iznik. That's not good. Here you go, says a voice. The rich aroma of freshly brewed coffee fills the room, soothing my frazzled nerves. Special delivery! Rikasan, who was in the middle of discussing the script with me, looks up at the two smiling girls and frowns. Oh shit, she's about to throw hands. She takes an ostentatious sip from her teacup in a show of pride. There are four of us gathered in my room tonight. Why aren't the sisters doing anything with us? Like, what are they doing? Did we just like get to a point where it's it's hard to write characters with, with, with six characters in a scene? It's hard to like make everybody feel important to the scene. So we just kind of <laughs> left out two of them while my meta partner and i work on the script the other two are looking through the tomes i brought from iznik their main task is to search for any mentions of the tulpa of agape or the name shion basquiat but there's something else too we've agreed that we will that we've agreed that they will share any notable info they come across about the seven mysteries or the origins of the academy and tell us if they encounter any concerning passages you're pushing it. You're pushing it. Rika is not going to like this. 
No way! My drink could totally make you much more of a crackhead! It kinda does. Eruka-san seems taken aback by Rika's reactions. Takasaki-san watches them out of the corner of her eye as she fills another cup. With a practiced hand, she deftly pours the dark liquid from the pot to the cup, simulating aroma wafting up from it. Cracking that whip. I feel that. I feel that. I'm tired as heck, but here I am at what? I mean, here I am at 1020 at night recording an episode of Flowers just for you. I hope you feel special. I let out a big yawn. I must have overtaxed my brain. My cup in one hand and the script in the other. I'm unable to cover my mouth and I flush. Damn, I can't even compete. Smiling easily, she peers down at the script from where she stands beside me. She smells like the winter wind. Yeah, give the girl a break. She has a lot going on. As I look up at Takasaki-san gracefully, Erika-san reminds her that I'm Cindrillion, not Cinderella. <laughs> Celine Dion! <laughs> yes! <laughs> She's Celine Dion. Her heart will go on. Not without Mayuri. I don't think her heart's going on without Mayuri. I'm sorry. It's just you're getting over this. Takasaki-san glances at me, clearly uncertain about whether Erika-san is pulling her leg again. Yeah, I can say Ashen Poodle. I can't say that other one. どちらかと Takasaki-san's expression says she thinks that much should be obvious. Erika-san jerks her chin in my direction, signaling me to explain. I think that's got something to do with the fact that, you know, the, the Disney movie Cinderella exists. At least in, in the modern context, I feel that that's probably why. That's probably why. I agree with her sipping on my coffee as I think back on when I read the original Grimm's fairy tales. <laughs> I hear the squeak of a wheelchair. Erika-san pours fresh coffee into her cup and takes a warming sip before speaking. Takasaki-san 
Takasaki-san frowns, but when she sees my enthusiastic nod, she grudgingly accepts it. You know, I don't know that glass slippers would actually feel good to wear. Um, wearing high heels enough is like enough of just like, you know what? This is not the greatest thing in the world. We put ourselves through this because one, they look kind of rad and, and, and two, you know, it's, it, it, you know what? It's, it, it's nice, but I can't imagine glass slipper, let alone like gold or silver. I mean, unless maybe they're like, you know, they got some kind of like with gold and silver, you could put a nice lining in them and it maybe maybe wouldn't look too weird. I mean, you could probably do that with glass too, but again, I just, I don't know that a glass slipper is gonna be super mega fun to walk around in. She glances Takasaki-san's way, her mouth curling into a cat-like smile. That's as is the case with most Grimm's fairy tales. They're, you know, like Brothers Grimm. It's not just Grimm because it's their name. They're often pretty grim tales. She lifts up her own leg and mimics slicing off the heel of her foot. Takasaki-san and Rika-san both grimace. And pecks out the sister's eyes. Yeah, yeah, I thought that's how that ended. Takasaki-san's head is down, her hands clamped over her ears, both Rika-san. Both Rika-san, who's looking a little green around the gills herself, and I are surprised by her intense reaction. Yeah, especially since she seems to like really love, you know, you know, ghost stories and the like. Yeah, that's pretty messed up. She jerks her chin in the direction of Takasaki-san, who still has her ears covered and her eyes screwed shut. <laughs> yeah, that, that's just how they, that's just how they be. Dang, you went too far. Scared your girlfriend. You're making up for that one tonight. Erika-san reaches out and gently shakes Takasaki-san's trembling shoulder until she fearfully opens her eyes. She then apologizes profusely while Takasaki-san glares daggers at her. Wow! Phrasing! Or maybe not. I mean, they're dating. Like, who can say at this point? <laughs> their business is their business. Oh, yeah, yeah, these two are perfect. Rikasan and I pretend not to hear their whispers. Like, you know what? Like, this this may be a story about, you know, like, the, 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 the love between Suo and Mayuri, but, like, really, I feel like the actual romance of the series and, like, the most straightforward relationship is absolutely Erika and Chidori. Um... We, we don't know enough about what's going on with Nerine and, and, and Yatsushiro other than that they became anime villains and they throw wheelchair girls out of their wheelchairs. Um, I don't know. Everybody's got a kink, I guess. <laughs> I should think not. Don't worry. No eye pecking. There may be some throat gouging. 
Once she's smiling again, I go on to say that it's as Erika-san said. I nod. Rikasan kindly pours Takasaki san a cup of tea and offers her a cookie. Yeah, like it's her thing. That's all she does. She hangs out in this room 20 hours a day brewing tea, and the other four hours a day are dedicated to going to school, the cafeteria, hanging out with friends, and then showing everybody the awesome tea she made. Then she picks up the book she was reading through yesterday. As Takasaki-san looks at the remaining stack of unread books, I overhear her murmur, So many left. Bibliophile. Are you a bibliophile? She hurriedly cuts me off, assuring me that that's not the case. But then, looking to Erika-san, she trails off. You know, there are four other eyes that we could get on this material that might make going over it a little easier. I can at least think of, I think at least two of the four remaining eyes would be interested in helping out and would, you know, be able to engross herself in being able to help with the situation. I really do wonder why they are not being involved in this. This is very weird. この、何か思いついたのなら話してみて。なんていうか、私としてはシオンバスキアとアガペのタルパの記述をこの古い本の中から探すことが遠回りに感じるの。どういうこと? <laughs> Why don't we just go talk to Dahlia Baskiat? I remain tight-lipped, not wanting to say aloud what we're all thinking. <laughs> Again, I love how earnest she is. Like, she's got the most straightforward ideas. For situations like that, like y'all, like why are we, why are we farting around doing all of this nonsense when like <laughs> there's a very obvious answer right in front of us? It makes total sense. However, but I just couldn't bring myself to raise the name Shion Basquiat in front of Sister Basquiat. Like, and there's only one person we're letting do that now. We promised her that if we were ever going to bring that name up, we would let her be the one to do it. So I feel like that's kind of like, that's like situation red. It's like, uh, we can't really do much else. Like we are in a corner and this is our last, like this is the bombshell we're dropping on her to make her say it. <laughs> oh. Okay, what'd you get out of that? I mean, I'm gonna assume it's nothing since you never mentioned it until now. Well, her words drip with sarcasm. They're also as fragile. Yeah, I can see that. She probably thought that, like, she was close enough to be able to uh, maybe get 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 by with asking a question like that and maybe being rebuffed. It's just like kind of like, oh, not as close as you thought you were, huh? But it's not to say that Dahlia is in the wrong here. It's 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 not a matter of life and death. Um, other people having this information, like I don't I don't think that we are entitled to that information but also the story goes nowhere if we don't get somewhere with it soon <laughs> I 
委員長はあの場にいなかったからそんなことが言えるんだシオンの名前を出した途端空気が凍りついた音が聞こえたぜ Yeah, yeah, that's how it went for Suo, too. You're going to have to make it. You're going to have to literally create a situation where she has to say something. And I, at this point, I don't know how you get there. A curtain of silence falls over the room for a moment. I mean, unless you just bring up, hey, you know, we kind of have a pretty good idea of the whole story based on what we found in the, 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 the specimen lab. Looking at the clock, I see that it's already past time for lights out. Maybe that's why everything is still so quiet. The deep, unbroken no noiselessness, as though everything beyond this room has dissolved away, sets off a ringing in my ears. The metallic sound of silence. <laughs> And I don't think, like, Erika is very happy about that. Oh, now she's very, very, very mad. Erika, come Oh yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody, pull back, pull back. This is a, this is a, this is not. We very clearly know that Dahlia is hiding something, and 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 Erica kind of already knows probably that we are going to get to the bottom of it at some point, and it probably is going to hurt her a bit, no matter like what it was. Like you know, I I just kind of feel like that's where we're headed. She knows better than anyone how untrue that is. She picks up her cup and drains the rest of the coffee in one gulp. Although she's trying to mask her feelings with anger, the faint but perceptible shaking of her coffee cup betrays her inner turmoil. Yeah, this isn't good for her. She doesn't like the fact that Dahlia is not squeaky clean here. Like she very clearly knows something. And, 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 you know, again, you know, get over your, your first love. And we, we very clearly know that she really did and probably still does have a thing for Dahlia after all of the, the care that she's shown her, so. <laughs> Seeing the look in her eyes, I stop myself, but then her gaze glinting sharp as the edge of a knife fades into something altogether weaker. Yeah, I can see that. Like, if she's actually behind something that's kind of crappy, it's not going to feel good. And Erica is probably going to be the one that gets hurt most by that. She trails off, but she doesn't need to say any more for me to understand to understand the depth of her love and respect for Sister Basquiat. The very definition of agape. Hmm. Yeah, like maybe like talk like yeah, like obviously like it's a touchy subject, maybe not just because she's covering up something, but like obviously somebody that is related to her in some way is dead, and obviously it's not, you know, good to have that brought up. Sure that she was about to back out of helping us, I'm now filled with relief. Time to go on the offensive. If she won't talk, we'll make her talk. Pulls out a hammer and some nails. The more active measures I came up with were simple.
If Sister Basquiat wasn't going to tell us anything herself, we would have to look at what she left behind. We would sneak into her room just like before. This time, we would be looking for a diary or a photo album, anything that might tell us something about her upbringing. Of course, this had to be done at a time when Sister Basquiat definitely wouldn't be in her room. And so, Erika-san pretended to be sick and Takasaki-san accompanied her to the nurse's office. Or rather, to Sister Basquiat's room. Since Sister Basquiat was teaching classes at the time, there would be no chance of her walking in on them going through her things. <clears throat> we put the plan into action during third period, when we also knew that dorm mother Katabami would be in the greenhouses. The plan itself went off without a hitch, except... Spider. What? What happened? Feels bad, man. Did they change the locks again? We had planned to meet up in my room after class to hear what they found, but... <laughs> Unable to bear the weight, I questioned them as we were on our way to the cafeteria for lunch. When I stop in my tracks, Erika-san also halts her wheelchair and explains in a bitter tone. Uh-huh. Were they just there? Are they just skulking around the premises now? Are they just like <laughs> actively in the school and Dahlia knows and they're, they're just... <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Things have escalated then. Takasaki says from behind Erika-san's wheelchair. After a brief pause, Rika-san mutters to herself incredulously. What in the world? I mean, I mean, obviously we're there doing something wrong, so they, but also, why are you, like, why are you here? I'm more than a little shocked by the revelation. Despite what happened that night on, in the library, I still hadn't thought they'd go all in on trying to stop us, that they'd turn into our enemies. I had hoped that the incident in the library was simply an unfortunate accident. My MTA partner's question snaps me back to the present. Of course, it wasn't outside the realm of possibility. Yeah, they saw you there, and it was just like, look, if anything physical is going to happen, this girl's just literally going to mop the floor with everybody here. Oh. Again? Oh, no, okay, this is like a direct sign of, like, this is a, a direct sign of hostility now. The, uh, the incident in the library was an accident, but this is like assured violence. <laughs> Reflexively, I take her hand in mine and run my fingers over her wrist. The skin isn't blemished at all, but her arm is so slender and fragile it makes my heart ache. <laughs> Takasaki-san clears her throat conspicuously and I realize we've been gazing into one another's eyes. I hurriedly pull away with another apology to Erika-san who gives me a little wave of her hand. Yeah, just do the same thing we've always done. It seemed like such a good plan. I didn't expect them to come and be ready to rumble. Yeah. 
She trails off, her gaze fixed on Rika-san. A prank? Wait, you got an idea? I mean, we are gonna try and stay on the defensive, it looks like. We're not gonna get thrown on the back foot. What? Oh, are they spreading rumors now? Are they fighting intelligence with counterintelligence? Oh, are they going to like make it really hard for them to be skulking around the premises because they've started a rumor so everybody's going to be looking for them? Oh, that's clever. She whispers to me as we're eating together, and I nod and look over to where the girls are chatting over their empty plates. <gasps> Ichiko-san's voice floats over, bringing their conversation to my ears. Counter-intelligence, my dear! Yeah, like if people are just going to be kind of walking around with their heads on swivels, it's going to be a hell of a lot harder to skulk around and, 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 and be inconspicuous if people are looking for something out of the ordinary. The werewolf of the bell tower. Okay. Oh, this is very specifically targeted. We are making very sure that they know who's doing this too. Erika-san's plan was to use the seven mysteries to get us moving forward again, to start a rumor that the werewolf of the bell tower had appeared once again. Also, I'm turning my air conditioner up. It's way too hot in here. I may be destroying the planet with my little window air conditioner, which is a lie. It's not us. We're not the ones destroying the planet. It's obviously corporations, but they're always going to be the one to tell us, no, it's you and your little dinky air conditioner, not us and our whole gas load of pollutants. It's always you, not us. You and your dinky little window air conditioners that you need to stay cool during the summer. I admit that I'm being a gigantic baby about it, but I also do not, I do not think that I am wrong about, you know, corporations wanting to blame normal people and their small indulgences over their gross indulgences. This LP is just way too woke now, talking about, talking about global warming and, 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 and <laughs> and climate control. I think there's people out there that would call, like, that, that would like be fans of this series, but then say that other games are woke despite this game being gay. Do you think that would, do you think that's a thing? Do you think there are people out there that are like that? <laughs> I mean, there probably are. It wouldn't surprise me, but like, this is very specifically gay media, but they would like, for some reason, this is okay, but then they would call other stuff quote unquote woke. It's very funny to me. I can't believe like it's it's taken me four volumes to finally scare off like half of the people watching this. It's like, oh no, wait a minute. Polly's fucking woke. Uh, she jerks her chin toward Ichiko-san's table. Silver fur? Uh-huh, uh-huh, I see what we're doing here. We have set into motion a really, really nice series of events, and we've, uh, we've, we've, uh, initiated help from the Ichigo Information Network to, uh, make sure that our information is disseminated properly. Here it throws people in the library, too. Erika-san raises her eyebrows at me. 
金髪ってところは八代先輩っぽいけれどいや、yeah. 本当にそれで引っ張り出せるの I wonder whether Yatsushiro Senpai will understand the meaning behind our rumor. Only three of us know the truth behind the previous werewolf of the bell tower incident. The addition of the silver fur is a clear indication that we want to meet and talk to her. From beside me, Erika san leans forward and speaks in a whisper that only I can hear. I mean, I feel like they should be involved at every level. I, I still don't understand why they don't know about, you know, everything else. Or maybe we have told them at this point and we're just being weird about it, but they've never kind of been around when we've been talking about it. So it's just kind of, I don't know. Yeah, they've already moved past the uh, the 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 Yatsushiro thing. She looks over to Ichigo-san and Ringo-san, whose expressions are clear and untroubled. But the twinge of guilt hasn't left me. However, regardless of those feelings, it came to me: a letter slipped into my shoe locker. Oh, what are we doing? Are we going Erica's point of view now? Oh, yep. I squint, trying to make out the path before me. It's one thing when the moon is shining, but as soon as the clouds drift across it, the darkness will be absolute. I probably won't be able to see my hand in front of my face. As though to validate my prediction, the curtain of darkness abruptly falls. With barely any sunlight to warm the earth during the day, the midwinter night is frigid. Whenever the moon pokes out through the cloud cover, I move my wheelchair forward, and when it hides again, I stop. I've traveled the path through the academy a hundred times, but it's somehow different at night and during the day. I can't simply guess at where I'm supposed to be going. Although no, it's, although I know it's way too early, I look forward to the I, I look toward the eastern sky, wishing for the sun to light my way. But nah, there's not a silver of light to be seen over the dark line of the horizon. <clears throat> I think of the letter that seemed to come to Shirahane right when she needed it most, just as we hoped Yatsushiro Senpai made contact. There was no preamble. All that was written was a date and a note that she would be waiting in the chapel at midnight, just as planned. Spreading rumors about the werewolf of the bell tower was all in service of getting her to make contact with us. Everything was going as it should. The question now was... <laughs> what if she gets in my face as soon as I arrive at the chapel? Maybe I'll find that it's not only Yatsushiro Senpai and Kamikado Senpai I'm facing. We're talking about someone who can spirit people away like Mayori Kosaka. We don't know how many people may be involved. I never expected it to turn into such a big deal, and yet, here we are. Still, I had looked into her face after the early summer rains had passed. Knowing that it was going to lead to this, perhaps I still would have said the same exact words. Only Kosaka, the one who's caused Shirahane such pain. I'm in position. <laughs> what about you, Sniper One? <clears throat> the chapel looms before me, dark and hulking like a crouching giant. Shrouded in darkness, the white walls make me think of pale, icy human skin. No. Giving myself an internal pep talk, I force my usual smile onto my face. The same smile my dad would always give me. The one Chidori says makes me look like a cat. 
I say my MTA's name softly, and with that, I'm back to my usual self. Oh, I reach out to the door. So what are you doing? What is the plan here? How are we cornering them? What do we got? When I push open the heavy door and enter the chapel at last, the cold pierces me like a knife, making me shiver. Somehow it's even colder inside than out. I raise my eyes to the dais at the end of the nave. Then... Apart from the three of us, I don't see any other figures in the chapel. Although I can't rely on my sight in this darkness, I trust my other senses, and the fact that I can't discern any other presence tells me that she didn't lie in her letter. Besides... Yuzuri Hayatsushiro is wearing her trademark cynical smile. Beside her, Nerine Komikado stares down at me like an angel, judging me for my sins. <clears throat> We're bringing back the theme, baby! Let's go! Well? Oh, that, that hurts. My pointed glare seems to roll right off her. She shrugs, her smile never wavering. Damn! She's really playing the role of anime villain here. <laughs> then again. <laughs> I, I say playing a role and we're talking about uh, Yuzuriha, which kind of just feels, uh... Yeah, that feels right. But the smile doesn't reach her pale gray eyes, which bore into mine as though searching for something. When I avert my gaze, she laughs. Alright, what's... what's... <laughs> what's our game here? They must think that by me being here, everything is going according to their plan. I'm relieved that they don't seem interested in making any moves right off the bat. ま、あんたたちが恐れているのは知らはねじゃなく私だと思ってる。だから今こんなにも余裕でいられる。違う。謎かけのつもり悪いけれど、あなたと話している暇は。まあいいじゃないか、ネリー。友との会交だ。いい
it sounds silly, but I'm guessing that since it was mentioned very clearly that the 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 part of one of the almanacs that mentions the the the, the talpa of agape, or 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 um. Uh, or the goddess of truth, like all of that shit's been torn out, then that's probably in her room somewhere. That would be my guess. Why you wouldn't just like <laughs> you know, burn it or or get rid of it or dispose of it in some fashion. But she, she, I think that that's clearly like what they've given up here is that like that, that's probably what's in her room. Again, the answer was silence. Channeling my father, I forge ahead. <laughs> That's why you're so calm right now, I finish. Right, I say, pushing away my nerves. But they don't do anything yet. They simply descend into silence again. Yes! Do tell us about one Shion Basquiat. She doesn't seem inclined to give me any answers. Mm. What have we got up our sleeve here? Because they're, I mean, they're just going to stand here and just go, nah, -uh, no, 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 bop, bop, bop. And just make fart noises at you anytime you say something. Talpa, more like Talpa. Gotcha. My blood boils at her lackadaisical attitude. It's an insult to all my bookworm buddy's efforts. However, keep him talking. You gotta draw something out. Have to draw it out for as long as oh, we're burning time because oh, they're sneaking in. They're doing something. Like I don't, I don't know what exactly they're doing. It's like what midnight here. It's like maybe, maybe Dahlia's out on patrol somewhere, and like we got them pulled away from. What is going on? If I don't, this will all be for nothing. Oh yeah. There's a subtle shift in her previously flippant tone, but it's enough to send a shiver up my spine. Uh-oh. She's read you. Uh-oh. You just gave away something. She cheats. She can read the inner monologue of the visual novel. That ain't fair. She trots out her old line about the eyes being the window to the soul or whatever. But she's right on the money and I can't help but gulp. I feel a tickle. I feel a trickle of sweat drip down my chest. Still, I keep my expression neutral. Even if she's cottoned on to my intentions, so long as she hasn't figured out our methods, I'm still one step ahead. Just barely. Despite my posturing, Atsushiro Senpai's eyes never leave mine. While I'm sure she's speaking metaphorically, it really does feel like she's looking through my eyes to read the secrets. 
written within. Then, Appeal to her sense of caring! I'm looking to provoke her. Not Komikado Senpai, that is. Oh! Yeah, redirect your attack. Go after the lackey. Oh, yeah? Throw her off her game. Throw her off her game by attacking Narine. That's a good that that that's a smart play. If she can indeed see through the window of my eyes to my soul, I just need to distract her from that view. Well, what are you gonna do to stop me? <laughs> Oh! Eat it! Oh, that's real good. Oh, she's been provoked. Oh, she didn't like that. あんたが自分で口にしたことだろ。無力の木こりだ。心ってやつがない。ああ、そうだよな。だからこんな恥知らずな真似ができっこない。<笑> Damn! Oh, that's... Oh, look at her go! Oh, just going right for the gut! I don't know whether it's because she won't stand for me insulting Kamikado Senpai or because I'd hit her where it hurts, but she narrows her bright silver snake-like eyes at me. Oh, she, yeah, it's definitely that you went after Kamikado. I think that that's a bigger part of it. I just also think that you really hit a nerve. If I keep pushing, I might get hurt, but whatever. Shirahane takes precedence. Nanika Man, I've wanted a burrito so bad for the last couple days. And I want one of those burritos that's not just like, I don't want a dinky little Taco Bell burrito. I want one of those burritos where you get three-fourths through it and you go, I can't do this anymore. But then you just keep going anyway and you're miserable later, but it's worth it because it tastes so good. That's the kind of burrito I want. I think of my relationship with you guys in the same way, she says. Words are like a slap in the face. She's been sticking her nose into our business since the spring, and I've often found her to be an annoyingly meddlesome presence. However, a red heat boils up in my stomach and chest, threatening to explode in a shout. I'm having trouble reining in my emotions. I thought of them both of Yatsushiro-senpai and Komikado-senpai as my friends. My seething emotions make my voice break as I reach for an answer of the sudden question because she's my friend, obviously. Her tone hasn't yet regained its previous carelessness, but nor is her gaze as serpentine as before. I'm stumped for how to answer. She stares intently at me, leaving a long, pregnant pause that seems to seep in any and all secrets lingering in the room. Oh, God! Yeah. Oh, you you were waiting. She was waiting to drop that one. She was waiting to pull that one out. And I, I think it's been obvious this whole time, at least definitely in this volume, that those are feelings that she's harbored for her for a long time. Oh, it's true. You like you're dead to rights on this one. Oh! 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 Well, 
I guess you're not the only one that can go sneaking into rooms, huh? Ooh. But again, it makes sense. There's a fire in my belly and in my chest. Oh. Damn. Oh, that's low. Through the heat, I feel a sharp pain in my heart, like it's being pierced with a thousand needles. Those feelings were my secret. She says something to me, but it doesn't reach my ears over the heat coursing through my veins and the unbearable pain in my chest. Right. I... Oh. 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 Little baby, come here. I want to hug you so much. So I won't falter anymore. Uh oh. A heavy, sonorous creak brings me back from the depths I'd, rec I'd receded into. The sound shouldn't be loud, yet it feels like a gong being rung right by my ear. Forcing my heavy limbs and sluggish mind into motion, I turn slowly. And there she is. Erika, eyes are Saved by the woman you love. Staring at me in obvious relief, my Amitie's face breaks into a smile as she dashes over and wraps her arms around my neck in a tight embrace. Oh. <laughs> she smells like winter. And like Chidori. At first, she looked at everything with disdain. Nothing was spared her haughty gaze. It was like looking at a version of myself from the past. Eriko? She stares intently at me, and deep within her eyes, I see the light of summer. The sharp, dazzling light you see when looking up at the sky from the bottom of a pool. The dazzle of my beloved partner in crime. <laughs> yes! Play it out. Let's hear it. Oh, that's good timing. I still don't even know what we did yet. I just know that this is a very sweet show of affection, and I'm all here for it, baby. Let's go. Chidori is still latched around my neck. I stroke her head, then look squarely up at the girls, a feline smile curving across my face. The plan was simple. I was the one they were most wary of. While I drew their attention here, Prez would call for Sister Basquiat, leaving her room empty for Shirahane to sneak into. Since we didn't know how long it would take, I had to keep them both talking for as long as possible. Meanwhile, Chidori would be waiting outside the chapel for Prez's signal, three circles drawn in the sky with a torch. Yatsushiro Senpai shrugs after hearing Chidori's explanation, a gesture that's painfully familiar. Then she takes a step forward. Chidori tenses, but I put my hand on her arm and shake my head. <laughs> no, you don't need to pile drive her through like seven or eight of these pews. I think she's done. Your obligation. Your obligation to what and who? 
When I ask her what she's talking about, she responds with her trademark cynical smile. Whatever happens next, I'll turn a blind eye just this once. So you're not out of the game yet, but you're giving us a free move. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, she's a person of her word. She's got principles. When Chidori asked me if I'm sure I nod, Yatsushiro Senpai's words are ominous, but I have no reason to refuse the bone she's throwing me. She takes a couple more brooding strides, cheerful as she ever was. Bounding strides, cheerful as she ever was. Then, as she's about to pass by me, she stops and leans down to bring her lips to my ear. The statue of the Virgin Mary stands atop a snake. Well, we know that. Is this something we've just been, like, we've been missing this whole time and glossing over because, like, hmm. Hmm. This is... This has been quite the encounter. She strides off before I can question her further. No. The set of their backs represents flat rejection, and I'm unable to call out after them. The singing bone. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. A story from Grimm's fairy tales. A man kills his brother out of greed, but even when he's reduced to nothing but bones, the brother never forgets his betrayal. In the end, he uses the tune of a whistle to condemn his brother. So, this is like, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm taking this right, this is Yuzuriha striking back at, wait, does that mean? So, if, if we take this to be Yuzuriha is, is the metaphor for the singing bone story here, she's striking, like her giving us that information is her striking back uh, at somebody that's done her wrong. So, but I could just be reading that wrong. You are blowing on my little bone. I shake my head, dismissing the verse, but internally, I wonder who it could be that ended up buried. And now that they're dead, what is the whistling bone they play? Their words, a silent cry of sorrow. <sighs> All of this is like the nightmares I have whenever I'm feeling low. The ones where something terrible is approaching and I try to run, but my legs won't obey me. And all I can do is stand there rooted to the spot as fear creeps up from beneath my feet. Those kinds of dreams. The plan we came up with was simple. While Erika-san detained Yatsushiro-senpai and Komikado-senpai, we made our way to Sister Basquiat's room. Rika-san called Sister Basquiat out for something, and I slipped into her vacated room to search for whatever it was the, other, the older girls feared being found. It was a simple strategy. However, although I looked from top to bottom, searching for whatever they might be afraid of, perhaps a diary or a photo, in the end I came up empty-handed. While you couldn't go as far as to call it Spartan, other than, other than the many teddy bears, Sister Basquiat's room was simple and minimalist. At first, I was relieved, thinking I'd be able to get my task over quickly, 
But rummaging through the desk drawers and thoroughly inspecting the wardrobe, I couldn't find anything that might negatively impact the girls. Time ticked by until I heard a sneeze from way down the corridor leading to the distant dorms. That was the signal to warn me they were coming back. When I heard it, I felt a sudden heaviness in my limbs. It was just like the nightmares I have when I'm being pursued by something terrible. My legs were frozen in place like I was trapped in a quagmire. Nothing felt real. When I heard a second sneeze, it finally hit home that I was about to be caught red-handed. Just then, I noticed a piece of paper on the floor in the otherwise neat and tidy room. How convenient! I moved falteringly, led by the glowing light of insect traps, until I reached the object that lay before the door. When I leaned down to pick it up, I found that it wasn't paper, but a white handkerchief. And what I felt when I saw it. I feel it again now. That same unreal nightmare sensation I felt in Sister Basquiat's room. The dark room is eerily silent. The only sound to be heard is the occasional rattle of the wind against the windows. It makes me think of old twisted fingers and gnarled and ancient branches tapping against the glass. No. Outside the window, I see, I see my stepmother. She scrabbles weakly at the window, her hair fluttering in the wind, her gaze spiteful. A chill runs down my spine and I feel a horrible sense of anxiety, like when I recall a scary scene from a horror movie just before washing my hair. I say my META's name though calling for a, as though calling for a guardian angel. The mental image of her, like a burst of spring sunshine, gives me a little courage. Coyote? Yo, you over there? You were literally on the other side of this wall. There's a faint knock on the wall, and I say her name questioningly this time. Pressing my hand against the wall, I close my eyes. I can feel her there on the other side. You're there! Euphoria surges through me when she answers in a whisper. I feel no more fear, no more cold. It's just me and her in our own little world. What are you out here doing? She says nothing, but I know she's there. Maybe that's why I treasure even this silence. It's an unspoken warning for me to stop. No, I think she spoke it. That was that was very clearly a spoken warning. <laughs> that was very clearly a spoken warning. It's an unspoken warning for me to stop, and my heart screams within me, desperate to see her, to be with her again. <laughs> Emotion surges up in me and I shout through the wall. If we both want to see one another so desperately, then why are we still relegated to speaking through walls? Perhaps she's terribly ill. Perhaps her face has been disfigured. God, I hope it's none of this. Horrible possibilities fill my mind. Her voice remains unchanged, but what if she's putting on a brave front? The statue of the Virgin Mary stands atop a snake. Okay. The key to getting Mayuri? Or the key to the darkness that lies at the heart of the Academy? Is there something in that modest room that could shine a light in the darkness? Although it was just, although I was just there, my memories of it are already hazy and undefined, like a bad dream. The warmth of her presence is gone. I'm now seized by a freezing cold at the core of my being. I wrap my arms around myself as though to ward it off and ask her a question. Are my actions hurting the one I love? I can't get her anguished voice out of my head and I feel a pain deep in my chest like nails clawing at my heart. 
Oh no. Out of nowhere, my stepmother's voice resounds in my right ear. She's so mean. Her whisper worms its way into my left ear this time, dripping with malice, yet at the same time, hideously sweet. We're just, we're just, we're just, we're just ending there? Yep, looks like it. All right. There is a story in Grimm's fairy tale called Marian Kind. A girl is born to a poor family. When she's three years old, she's taken away to heaven by the Virgin Mary to live life, if, uh, to live a life of blissful happiness. Time passes, and one day when the girl is 14, Mary leaves on a journey. She gives the girl 13 keys, telling her that she can open all but the 13th door. But the girl is curious, and she unlocks the forbidden 13th door. When Mary returns, she realizes that the door has been opened and asks the girl if she did it. The girl stubbornly insists she did not. As punishment for her sins of disobedience and lying, Mary takes away the girl's voice and casts her out of heaven. After that, the girl lives a sad and lonely life until one day a prince happens upon her. He takes her back to his castle and they marry. They live happily, and soon she is with child. However, on the night that the child is born, the Virgin Mary appears to her and asks, Did you open the forbidden door? The girl, now queen, stubbornly says she did not. As punishment for her lie, Mary takes the queen's child. After that, she bears a second and a third child. With each birth, Mary appears and asks the same question. Each time the queen lies, her child is taken. At the end of the story, the queen regrets her lie and repents, and her three children are returned to her. She lost everything with the lie told at 14, and her, con and her continued refusal to tell the truth saw those most precious to her taken away. When I heard this story, I felt afraid. The story that begins now is that of the miserable queen struggling to get back her lost children. The air is warm as though teasing the arrival of spring, and I'm teasing the arrival of the end of this episode. I don't know that I'm teasing it. I'm just out and out just putting an end to the episode. So, wow. That. Oh, boy. That was a... Uh... Yeah, that's one of them there. Real good ones where we got a lot. We got a lot. There's still stuff that we don't know, but the, the important thing is, is we got a free move. We have one free move that Yuzuriha is going to give us. And like, uh, now it's just like, okay, how are you going to use that? Like, what's your, what's your, uh, what's your next move? And is it going to be substantial enough to get you close to the truth? That and Mayuri is very clearly able to like get out and about because if she left the handkerchief there as a signal for her to get out and to know where to find her. Man, wait, like, what? <laughs> this could just go anyway. This this could just go literally anywhere at this point, I guess. But uh, that is going to do it for now. 
course, I'd like to thank you as always for coming out and spending some time letting me borrow just a bit of your time. And I hope you have a nice rest of your whatever, wherever you are and whatever it is. And we will catch you next time.